truth be told, I was ready to hang it up till I met you today. So you're not from around here. It's hard to explain. Captain Marvel is just around the corner and she's going to be taking on some pretty big villains in 2019. That includes Thanos, the Scrolls, and this old lady. That's not exactly what's going on there. It's highly likely that this nice old lady is actually a scroll, one of those shape-shifting aliens from the Andromeda Galaxy. The Skrulls will be making their long-awaited Marvel Cinematic debut in Captain Marvel, a film that will explore elements of the Kree Skrull War. So what's the Kree Skrull War? Let's find out. First, make sure to hit that subscribe button for your comic book deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. Don't forget to click the link in the description below to enter our Guardians of the Galaxy giveaway, courtesy of our friends at fun.com. Hurry up, because the contest runs until October 1st. The Kree Scroll War is one of the most famous and influential Marvel story arcs. Basically, the endless conflict between these two alien races was brought to Earth. The nine-issue story written by Roy Thomas incorporated elements from the Avengers, Fantastic Four, Inhumans, and of course, Captain Marvel. It's considered by critics to be a landmark event birthed by the Silver Age of comics, and a precursor to the more modern crossover events such as Secret Wars, the Infinity Gauntlet, and Civil War. Let's start with the first half of that name, the Kree. They are the blue space aliens that love to fight and follow a techno-organic supercomputing hive mind called the Supreme Intelligence. You're probably pretty familiar with the Kree thanks to what we've seen in the MCU and on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Guardians of the Galaxy nemesis Ronan the Accuser is the biggest name we've seen thus far, but we've also seen Korath the Pursuer. They will both make another appearance in Captain Marvel. Additionally, we've seen the Kree's impact on humans, resulting in the super soldier species of Inhumans in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and that failed Inhuman spin-off show. Now please, can you tell us what the King thinks? Of course, my king. As for the scrolls, we almost saw them in the original Avengers. But due to some questions involving rights, Marvel used the Chitauri as Loki's alien army instead. This is because the scrolls were initially a Fantastic Four villain, thus a Fox property. Now, unlike the Kree, the scrolls are green-skinned aliens with ridged chins and have the ability to shapeshift. Some scrolls, creatively called Super Scrolls, are even able to mimic the superhuman abilities of Earth's mightiest heroes. I know what you're thinking, which one of these Avengers isn't who we think they are? So how does Captain Marvel fit into all of this? Well, the original Captain Marvel, the Kree Marvel, arrived on Earth after spending quite a bit of time in an alternate dimension, also known as the Negative Zone. The worst part of this alternate dimension is having to face off against Annihilus, the cosmic villain who's just waiting for someone to join him. Eventually, Marvel is captured by a handful of Avengers, Quicksilver, the Scarlet Witch, and Vision, as well as Hulk's sidekick Rick Jones. It turns out that Marvel was poisoned by radiation from the other dimension, and faces death unless the Avengers and some NASA scientists can find a cure. Meanwhile, over in the Kree neck of the woods, Ronan the Accuser is attempting to overthrow the established leadership, and sends a Kree sentry robot to kill the injured Marvel. Oh, and by the way, at some point during all of this, Marvel and Scroll Princess and Nell conceived a child together on some major Romeo and Juliet vibes. Back to the story, so that Kree Sentry robot successfully grabs Marvel, and the Avengers reach out to one of Marvel's former colleagues for some more information. That person is Carol Danvers, who was an officer in the U.S. Air Force. So Rick Jones and the Avengers, now the Wasp, Hank Pym as Yellowjacket, and Hawkeye, using Pym's giant man tech as Goliath, travel to the Arctic Circle. It turns out that Ronan the Accuser is attempting to take control of Earth by de-evolving the blue planet to its prehistoric roots. Yes, Hank Pym is turned into a caveman, along with several others. And when Wasp shows up, they all lust for her uncontrollably. Ronan then takes control of Goliath Hawkeye's mind and makes him fight his fellow Avengers. That is, until Ronan finds out that the Skrulls have invaded his own people, so he has to head back quickly to fight the Skrulls. Luckily, the Kree Sentry robot self-destructs, and Pym, the scientists, and the environment revert back to normal. Now, this part of the story is notable because it's the beginning of the Scarlet Witch and Vision's romance, which we've already seen evolve on the big screen. Tell me what you feel. Feel you. 
But what about the fallout from Marvell's alien arrival on Earth? Well, the event spurred Senator H. Warren Craddock to pursue his Joseph McCarthy-esque policies against undercover alien spies. Craddock formed the Alien Activities Commission with a particular emphasis on watching the Avengers. It got pretty testy there, as Marvell and Danvers were able to escape to safety while anti-alien protesters vandalized the Avengers' mansion. Now, at this point, the Avengers' name is taking a bit of a hit, so Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor return to the mansion and disband it immediately. A dejected Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Vision leave and attempt to check on Marvell, but they are attacked by three cows. Now, these aren't your normal cows. They are pretty important to the story. The cows transform into three members of the Fantastic Four, but are in fact scrolls. Watching a cow? Impressions. Vision is injured and Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are captured. Marvell is also captured once it's learned that Danvers is actually a super scroll. He's taken hostage and coerced into building a super weapon that will destroy all life on Earth. Vision just barely makes it to the Avengers mansion and is only repaired after Ant-Man shrinks down to fix the inside of his android components. The world sure seems different from down here, doesn't it, Scott? Wait. The Avengers soon find out that the cows were the same scrolls from way back in Fantastic Four issue number two, a nice little Easter egg for diehard comic readers. Now, how about the Inhumans? That super scroll that captured Marvell wasn't just there to mess things up for the Avengers. He's actually there to destroy Adelin, the secret city of the Inhumans. Remember, the scrolls want to wipe out all things Kree. At this point, the Avengers have their hands full fighting off the government and actual robots, but have to switch their focus when the Inhuman Triton shows up in need of their help. On top of all the problems with the Super Scroll, Inhuman ruler Black Bolt was also overthrown by his brother Maximus, for like the hundredth time. So the Avengers split up, half of them take the fight up against the Super Scroll, while the others head to San Francisco to track down Black Bolt. Maximus stands zero chance against the Avengers, but the Kree manage to capture Rick Jones. The Avengers now do their best Guardians of the Galaxy impression by traveling across the galaxy with a S.H.I.E.L.D. spaceship to rescue Marvell from the Skrulls. This includes a battle with the entire Skrull armada in deep space. During the trip, Vision malfunctions a bit, losing his mind, and nearly beat a Skrull captain to death after the Skrull threatened Scarlet Witch's life. Remember, this robot has real human emotions. Marvell has no other choice but to use the super weapon, and it sends Rick Jones into the negative zone. Luckily, Jones is saved from a long alternate dimension vacation thanks to the Kree leader, the Supreme Intelligence. In turn, this unlocks a special hidden power inside Rick, referred to as the Destiny Force, of course. Rick is able to conjure up a handful of Golden Age superheroes like the original Captain America, Patriot, Finn, Angel, Namor, and the original Human Torch. Together they team up with the Avengers and they're able to end the war with the Skrulls. The Destiny Force also reveals the truth behind Senator Craddock. No surprise here, he was a Skrull this entire time. Specifically, he was that fourth scroll from that original Earth exploration, and unfortunately for him, an angry mob of protesters weren't too happy about it. By the time the Avengers returned, the real Senator Craddock was found, and thankfully, the anti-Avengers sentiment cooled off. So how will the Kree scroll war fit into Captain Marvel? Well, according to Kevin Feige, it will have a major influence on the film since this is the MCU debut of the Skrull Empire. We will definitely be learning about the thousand year plus conflict between these two empires. Our hope is that we get a cool history of animation like we saw in the setup of Black Panther. As we've learned from the comics, one of the reasons why Earth is so important is because it's the perfect strategic planet in between both empires. Additionally, it's been long targeted for its vast resources and life forms. We're guessing the Marvell and Carol Danvers dynamic could mirror much of what we read in the comics. As EW reported, the film will begin after Carol acquires her powers and leaves Earth to join the elite military team, Star Force. It also seems that she'll be learning more of her past throughout the film, even perhaps as flashbacks to the accident that gave her those powers. It's possible they could remix a few elements from the comics for the big screen adaptation. At the end of the Kree Scroll War, Marvell bonded with Rick Jones, but they couldn't exist in the same plane at the same time. One possibility is, is that Danvers acquires the powers through Marvel's DNA, sending him to another dimension, possibly the negative zone. This might explain why we haven't seen Danvers in the MCU until now. Perhaps she might get cast into an alternate dimension by the end of Captain Marvel, sacrificing herself to save Earth. What we do know is that the Kree and Skrulls are here to stay. They've been at war for centuries, and the MCU is just scratching the surface of their conflict. 
Just wait until we get to Secret Invasion, but we'll save that for another video. Thanks for watching guys, hit me up in the comments and let me know how you think the Kree Scroll War will fit into the upcoming Captain Marvel. And also, let me know which current MCU superhero you think has secretly been a Scroll this whole time. I'm guessing it's Hulk.